What's up, guys? It's Classic 1333 coming to you live outside. They're going for it, guys. We move. Oh, no. So, um, the first match they had, they had Tyson Kidd one on one with Evan Bourne. Mickey James uh, pinned Maurice again. Evan Bourne hit a shooting star press and got a three count. Just make sure Cena is like actually injured or something. So they put him in this exhibition match. What the hell is an exhibition match? I don't know. Hey, who won the wrestling match? Where'd the music go? Ah! What's up, YouTube? It's Classic1333 coming to you live outside today on this uh, cloudy, crappy, beautiful day. Yeah, my favorite kind of weather is cloudy and rainy and a cool temperature, not too hot but not cold. It's probably about 70 out here, so it's pretty comfortable. Hopefully it won't start downpouring during this video. But Mother Nature didn't want me to do a video outside of this, so I'm defying her! So, yeah. So I'm here with the Raw review from last night's 3-hour Raw. A very long Raw, but a pretty good Raw, I thought. So, uh, let's jump right into it. Oh, and today's drink of choice is, uh, iced tea. It says sweetened, but it's actually unsweetened. I saved the bottle. Recycling. So we start the show off with uh, Michael Cole and uh, Jerry Lawler just sitting at the commentating table, just kind of hanging out. And uh, they announced that Mr. McMahon has a, you know, will announce the new GM of Raw tonight. And then Jerry Lawler's like, oh, he, he's got something else he might say, too. So we'll have to see what that is. So then we, they show a recap of last week's show of uh, Legacy destroying Batista's arm and then Triple H annihilating Orton. So with their usual like little gunshots and their promos and stuff. So that was all good and dandy. Which we'll again see that later. So so our first match of the night, we get the Intercontinental title on the line. We got Chris Jericho versus Rey Mysterio. Great, great matchup. Like, I kind of wish they would have opened the opened the show with the ECW title match because that fouled, the sh fouled this match later and it wasn't like nearly as good as this match was, so. But let's talk about this match for a little bit. So Jericho and Ray had a great matchup. They, uh, you know, back and forth, back and forth. Some of my favorite moves was, uh, like, Jericho was going for, like, his springboard drop kick to Ray, and then Ray drop kicked him out of the ring. Like, he caught him in midair when he was going for it. And then Ray was going to jump at him with his seated senton. Jericho catches him and slams him on the commentator's table, you know, head first. So that was pretty awesome. And, uh, like, those were my favorite moves in the match. And then the finish was uh, Jericho. Uh, Ray was going for, like, a springboard senton move or something. Like, I guess his West Coast pop or whatever. And Jericho, like, caught him and started trying to rip the mask off, you know. And, you know, Mysterio's protecting his mask. And then Jericho hits a code breaker. One, two, three. So Jericho's your winner for the matchup. And uh, what was... Oh, yeah, I wrote a little note here. A, a WTF mo moment. So, what was up with that little time clock they had, like, outside of, you know, during the match? They're like, you know, 33 minutes till the WWE Championship match. It's like they kind of forget, you know, this Intercontinental Championship match has a 15-minute time limit or something. What if it went that far? You know, what if the match afterwards went up to the time limit, you know? I mean, they can't just, like, schedule a match to happen in this many minutes, you know, without considering time limits, can they? I mean, well, if WWE could, you know, they control everything. They control the world, the world we live in. It's WWE. So, well, wrestling world is. But it's like they could just like, oh, we're just going to shorten the time limit this match and shorten the time limit this match, you know. So, you know, rule book kind of just goes out the window. You know, you know, there goes the rule book out the window. So, so what do we get next? We got Orton backstage. Um, Orton's talking about um, how he took out Tri Triple H and Batista and Flair. Well, how he took them out, you know, punted the heads. Well, he broke Batista's arm. And uh, basically, like, I don't know. What, what did I write? Basically, he's just going to talk about how, fa like, basically, uh, the fans are going to be talking about how he won back the WWE Championship versus talking about how Triple H is back or something. And then Cena interrupts him and, uh, you know, says that Orton's forgetting about, you know, him and the 500-pound giant that's in the matchup. An angry giant. So Orton's getting overzealous, I guess, or something. That's basically the whole purpose of the promo. 
So next we get the uh, Mr. McMahon interview, and uh, Cole's asking him, who's the new GM going to be? And then McMahon makes like a big announcement that he like sold Monday Night Raw to this so-and-so individual. And uh, he'll announce whoever it is after the WWE Championship match. So... It's like right here, it's kind of like, okay, that's kind of interesting, but, you know, who's it going to be, you know? But we'll find out later that it wasn't worth it. <laughs> I'll talk about that in a minute. So next we get the ECW Championship. We get Christian versus Tommy Dreamer. And um, for what it was, it was a good matchup, but it was too short. Like, I, th I think the match was maybe like four minutes, five minutes. You know, if you figure they would have at least had like, you know, a com match, commercial break, finish the match, you know? So, these guys have had better matches because they've had more time, so. But for what it was, it was good. Uh, Dreamer won with the small package. So, uh, Christian, like, was going for the, the kill switch and gauge. And then, um, the, uh, he, he hurt his ankle and then Dreamer capitalized with small package, so. So, too short, but a good match. So next we got backstage, we got Bella Twins and Kelly Kelly just kind of gossiping with each other, you know, like about who the new GM's going to be or who the new owner is of Raw and, you know, will they still keep their jobs? And then one of them's like, oh, yeah, 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 we will. Yeah, they will. So nothing to worry about for them. <laughs> yeah, and the commentators didn't say sexy, smart, and powerful for once, so that was kind of nice. It was like a moment, a breath of fresh air. Speaking of fresh air, you should check out the lake behind me. I know it's cloudy and crappy outside, but doesn't that lake look beautiful today? So, they show a recap of Legacy destroying Batista's arm again! Again! And then, uh, then they show some, like, you know, pictures of Batista's surgery he had on his biceps. I thought that was kind of cool. You know, later Lawler was like, oh, those, those gruesome photos of the surgery or something. Well, guess what, Lawler? When people get injured, you know, Torn muscles, broken bones, they have to have surgery so they can get better. So they can get better, so they can come back. You should know something about that. You've wrestled for how many years, man? So, my little rant on that. So next we get, uh, well, bef we're, before I announce the WWE Championship matchup, Cole said something about, is Orton invincible? He is not invincible! You know, no, he's not invincible. I think a shotgun would, t would take care of him. So, but anyway, WWE Championship match. We got Randy Orton versus Big Show versus John Cena versus Triple H in a Fatal 4-Way matchup. And uh, this was a pretty good matchup. Um, yeah, I, I wrote down, like, Triple H's entrance back to a minute and 30 seconds of the show every week, you know. I'm really not happy he's back. <laughs> I, I don't like him. He's just so stale to me, like in the main advances. It's always the same thing with him, you know. I mean, as he's not like the most horrible wrestler or anything. He's a good wrestler, but it's just his storylines are so stale. And it's like we have to have Orton versus Triple H again, you know. So, but let's talk about the matchup. So, Pretty much, you know, Orton and Triple H fought fought each other most of it. Cena and Big Show fought each other most of it, and then toward the end they started, you know, kind of fighting every all fighting each other, and uh, pretty much like Big Show dominated most of the matchup when he was like on offense and stuff. Obviously, he dominates his matches, and uh, I'm trying to remember what kind of what happened. Uh, Triple H hit a hit a uh, pedigree on Big Show, and then Cena hit a fu on Triple H. And then um, Cena went to go pin Big Show, and then Orton grabbed Cena. Or, yeah, Orton grabbed Cena. He threw him into the turnbuckle or something, shoulder first. Then he hit Big Show with an RKO, one, two, three, and Orton's the new WWE champion. So I was real happy about that because Orton's awesome. And uh, so is Miz. Miz is also awesome. I will see him later. Oh, Cole had a great line in this matchup. He said, well, if you take Orton and Big Show out of the equation... Cole, you can't just hit, Cole, if you put x equals zero and you have a math equation going on, yeah, you've solved half of the equation, but you still have to set y equal to zero because that way you answer the full equation on what plot you're trying to pinpoint using 